So now let's talk about representing functions by a power series. So this is actually not, it wasn't the easiest thing for me to understand. And so please pay attention to this, right? It, it gets a little confusing at points. So we can represent uh, certain functions by power series and uh, they're only accurate within a certain um, interval, okay? So that's where we're gonna find. So remember that the geometric series, right? Since it converges, it can converge to something like this, right? And one of the ways you can express a geometric series is like, like this, right? Now, again, it, it, it converges to that sum right there, right? Where R is some kind of ratio. And if that R, the absolute value of that ratio is less than one, all right, then the geometric will divert, uh, excuse me, will converge. But if it's greater than or equal to one, they will diverge, right? So we're going to use that information to figure out the next few things, right? So again, let me write it like that. So we can also write a power series like this, okay? So these are related. A geometric series is a type of power series, All right? So we can write it like that. And if we have that, then this is a very specific, right? Almost like the geometric series, but it, the, it will converge to this, okay? Now, this is if it's center around x is equal to zero. And if it's not center around equals to zero, which I think in example four, three or four, you have one that it's not, um, then you can also look at it like this, right? We have x minus c, c being the center of where this uh, sum is located. So now let's take a look at the first at uh, the first example. So we're going to find a power series for f of x, uh, which is that center at x is equal to zero. They want us to give them the uh, first four non-zero terms and the general term right now. And then after that, we're going to find the interval of convergence. So there's actually quite a bit in here, right? So this is what we're going to do. I wish they had started with something easier than this, but they didn't. Okay. So essentially, I want to make this look like this. That's my goal, all right? Because if it does, if it looks like that, then I know the the power series will look like that. Okay, so here's the first thing I'm gonna do. So there's quite a bit of manipulation. You really gotta be sharp on your algebra here. So make sure you understand what's going on, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I will switch the two and the x. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do here, and excuse me, I actually want to make this look like this, excuse me, like the, like the geometric series, I guess, more than the power series, but the power series and geometric series are the same, right? So I want to make it look like that. All right, so now in this case, I'm going to divide everything by two because I want this two to be a one, all right, according to what we have here. So I'm going to divide everything by two on the top and on the bottom. Now the next thing I got to do, notice that what I have here is that I have a minus in between the one and the R. I have a minus, right? So what I'm going to rewrite this as three over one minus X minus negative X over two. All right, and that's gonna kind of look like this now, right? Now, in this case, A is three, and R is equal to negative X over two, okay? Now, because I wanna make it look like the geometric series here, which is a power series, All right, so this is the example of what we had. So I'm just gonna fit it into that formula. This a is a three. This one is a negative x over two to the n power. All right, and they, they want us to give them the first four terms, all right? So we found the power series. Now we wanna give the first four terms of so n was equal to one, that would give us a, um, excuse me, if n is equal to zero, and that would give us a three here. If n was equal to one, that would give us a negative three x over two. 
if n was a 2, that would give us uh, x squared over 4 times 3, so plus 3x squared over 4. And then if I plug in, where am I at? So 0, 1, 2. So if I plug in a 3, I would get a 3 over 8. But that would be a negative x, right? So there's my first four terms. Now, basically, they want us to then find the general term, right? So as you can tell, the only thing that changes on here would be a 3. That 3 would stay the same the entire time, right? Now, this right here would just be negative x over 2 to the n power. Okay? So hopefully you can see how I got that. Now, the next thing is we're going to try to find out the interval of convergence. All right? So according to the – since this is a geometric series, this will converge only if this ratio inside this absolute value is less than 1. Okay? Now, what we can do from here is that the negative really doesn't matter, right? Because we have the absolute value, so we can really factor a negative out. And that would, and when I say factor a negative out, negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. So this is only going to give me positive values. So I can rewrite it like this, which I can then rewrite like this. Okay, remember, when we have, if I want to get rid of the absolute value, so I just make the... Uh, the one positive and negative and switch the inequalities, all right? So if you have more questions about how I'm doing that, please let me know. Okay, so there is the interval of convergence. And now here, and normally, right, this kind of looks like what we did before where the next step would be to check the endpoints. But remember, my, this is not really, is, this is not really going to be needed, all right, because what happens is the endpoints are not going to be included because if the endpoints were included, right, that would make this greater than 1. Okay, so basically picture a 2, right? If I plug in a 2 for x there, I would get a 1, which is not less than 1. Okay, so there's no need to check the endpoints. So this is part of the answer that I'm looking for also. Okay, and then remember, so here's what this means, all right, that this... Let me highlight it. This function right here, highlighting is not working. Forget it. All right, this function right here, let me switch colors here. This function right here, all right, is basically can be represented accurately or very close to, pretty close to accurately by this series right here. That's the, really the important part but only within this interval, all right? So all, a lot of those stuff, can the y values uh, particularly, can be represented very accurately, uh, but only for this function right here, but only between negative 2 and 2, okay? So let's go ahead and move on now. On example 2, I'm just going to put it, I, I'm going to put the key to the notes so you can see them. Uh, it says that you can also find the power series for a rational function by using long division. I'm just not sure how they did that long division because I, I, I honestly I have never done it like that, right? So I'm going to put it up there so you can see it. I don't think it's that much easier, maybe because I, I haven't done it like that. But anyways, let's move on. So now we're going to explore some manipulation techniques that can be used to find other series, which includes substitution in the series, which is sort of what we did just now. Uh, we can also multiply or divide the series by a constant or a variable, adding or subtracting two series and differentiating or integrating series. And I, I found this one that uh to be kind of the most difficult but also the most fun on there all right so let's go ahead and go on to example number three all right so on example number three notice that this one they're asking me to find a geometric series all right for f of x but it's going to be centered at x is equal to two so for that okay we have a slightly different formula and we can call it we can call it this normally a is one or if we can make it one, that would be great. Okay. Now we have a lot of stuff to worry about. So let's just make that one. All right. So again, now I'm gonna, we're going to try to approximate this right here. Okay. So let me see what they did here in example one. Okay. 
So this one's gonna be a little easier to deal with if we look at it like this, okay? So, and that's that's really gonna be the hard part for you to try to decide that. Um, but let's go ahead and give it a try, right? Notice that the reason we picked that is because this is kind of a one already, okay? There's really not much I can do to get rid of a lot of this stuff, okay? So let's go ahead and do it. Let's see if you understand what I'm saying here. So first, we're gonna start off by rewriting this. Now, I wanna rewrite this so I can fit it into the uh, geometric series okay so what we're gonna do here is rewrite it the next step is gonna be kind of weird all right what I'm trying to do here is I know that it's center at 2 so I know that this really is not just X but it's really X minus 2 but this has the the, uh, the denominator has to be equivalent to this so notice that I have a 2x minus 1 and right now if I distribute this 2 right here I would have a 2x minus 4, all right? So to make it equivalent, I have to add a 3. Again, if you don't see what's going on, distribute this, add the 3, and you'll know you'll notice that this is going to be the same thing as that denominator, right? So I haven't, fundamentally, I haven't changed it. I just rewrote it in a very strange way at the moment, okay? So now what I'm going to do from there is I'm going to switch the 3 and the 2x minus 2. And then to make it fit into this, right, and I, I, for me, that was honestly the hardest part to try to figure out what looks like what I want, okay? And then, I, again, you may not know what I'm talking about yet, but once we get to a certain point, you will know what I'm talking about. So now, uh, I'm going to to make it into a 1, right? I, I want to make the numerator 1, and I want to make this right here 1 also. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to factor out a 4 out of the numerator. I'm going to factor out a 3 out of the denominator. Now, the top part is easy to see. That's just the 1. Now, at the bottom part, if I factor out a 3 out of here, right, that would leave me with a 1 for the first term. By the second term, I have to write this as 2 thirds x minus 2. Okay. Uh, again, please notice, all right, if, so if you don't believe me, all right, distribute this 3 to those two, and you're gonna see that you're gonna end up with this. All right, finally, we almost have what, what we need here. Almost looks like this, right? The, but we have a one and a one here, but we're missing that negative right there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna uh, factor out a negative, sort of like what we did in the first example. So we're gonna write this as four thirds, is C, uh, not equal to, excuse me. This is going to be 1, so no change there. But I'm going to rewrite this as 1 minus a negative 2 thirds x minus 2, and then close brackets, all right? Now, I want this to have the form, in my particular case, as a over 1 minus r, but in this case, since it's already made the a1, so we're going to write this like this, okay? Now, the 4 thirds I can write on the outside, so that's not a big deal. So this is from 0 to infinity. And I'm going to write this negative, and yeah, negative. I'm looking at the wrong one. I'm basically going to write this. This is your A, uh, this is your R, excuse me. All right, so we're going to write this as negative 2 thirds. Oh. Excuse me. Okay. So that's x minus 2. Write all of that to the nth power. All right. So that's what we got for that. Okay. Now, that's, that's you can simplify more than that. And when, I, when you see the notes, hopefully you'll take a look at the notes that they gave me. And you can see that um, uh, the teacher, if you will, she did simplify this further. I don't see the need for that, okay? But if you see why, you let me know. All right, so because this is a geometric series, remember this right here. And by the way, A of N, or A is 1, okay? We normally don't write that, but uh, this right here on the inside is R, 
Okay, so to figure out the interval of convergence, I have to do this. Now the absolute value, right, it has to be less than one for it to be convergent for a geometric series. So what I'm gonna do here is that the absolute value of negative two thirds is two thirds. And then I'm gonna multiply both sides, well, multiply times the reciprocal, All right? Let me Let me take it easy here. Let me take it one step at a time here. So I can do that. All right, now I can multiply times the reciprocal, which is three halves. And then if I want to get rid of the, the absolute value, drop them. And then we're going to add the two to each side. So this would be one half. So if I add two to the other side, that would be seven halves, all right? So that's the interval of convergence right there. So again, remember what that means, all right? That this function right here can be represented pretty accurately with this series only between these two values. All right, let's go to example four. Now, when it talks about a finding a Mac, uh, McLaurin polynomial, all right? They, they want us to use basically the same method we've been using here, right? So let me see how we did this. So we can use it kind of the same way, all right? Remember that I kind of, I kind of want to approach this again, sort of like this, okay? So if that's the case, all I'm going to do here, that's basically already in that term, except for I just have to rewrite it as 1 over 1 minus a negative x squared. Okay, so for me, A is 1 for the geometric series. R is going to be negative x squared, all of that to the nth power, which we could rewrite if we wanted to. As negative 1 to the n, and we can write this as x to the 2n. And they want us to give, and really we could have left it like that, but I just decided to simplify just a little bit. They want us to write the first four non-zero terms, right? So here they are. Plug in zero for n, plug in one for n, plug in two for n, so on and so on. So hopefully you can tell why they call this a McLaurin, uh, that why they call this a McLaurin um, polynomial, because notice that I'm, it's like I'm skipping, right? I went from the zero term to the second term to the fourth to the sixth, and I don't, it starts at the center. Okay, so that's, that's kind of the important part. If they don't tell you where they're starting, they're starting at the center for the McLaurin uh, polynomial. All right, so now we're gonna find the interval of convergence. All right, so now for the interval of convergence, okay, it's going to be slightly different, okay? Now, because this is going to be a McLaurin, we're going to treat it like what we did on the last section. We're going to use the ratio test. And it turns out that this is going to be just like the geometric series, but let's say that you didn't know that. So remember, the ratio test says that you're going to add a 1 to the n uh, and again they on this one what they did is they factor out the negative the, if you have the absolute value of a negative uh, value you can actually make it a positive one and move it out or don't even write it which is what I'm doing in case you're wondering where the negative one went okay and this is over at x to the power of 2n now this right here is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity. Notice that I'm saying n. Now this right here, don't write it because somebody's going to write it real quick. What happens here is that you had a 2n plus 2 over x over 2n. So again, please don't write this, which is x to the 2n times x to the x squared over x to the 2n. So that's how you ended up with this. Okay. So anyway. But notice that it's saying the limit as n goes to infinity, but there's no n left, all right? So all I have left for this would be this. 
Now, believe it or not, uh, for me, that was sort of hard to solve. I know what the answer was. I know that this X has to be between negative 1 and 1, and that will give you something less than 1. But it was I couldn't really find a way to say that very well, and I don't really know what I was missing, but I know what the answer would be. So, again, X squared is less than 1 would be the same thing as the absolute value of X is less than 1. So my uh, convergence will be between negative 1 and positive 1. Okay. Now, on this one, you have to check the endpoints. And so let's check. So we have x is equal to negative 1. And again, man, this is just a geometric series. I don't want to do this. They do it in the notes, but let's just plug in the negative 1. And we're going to plug in the negative 1. Uh, let's plug it in right there. So we have a negative 1 in, negative 1 to the 2n. Now this is the same thing, and yes, between 0 and infinity. Now, negative 1 to the 2n, that's just 1. All right, so I don't have to rewrite that, or 1 to the nth power, so nothing's going to change. So what's going to happen here is that this function right here is going to go between... Uh, it's going to go between 1 and positive 1 like the entire time, but it's never going to converge. Now, if you don't see that, that's fine. You could have used the nth term test, right? If you take that to infinity, well, that's just going to be infinity. So, all right, same thing with x is equal to 1. It basically gives you the same thing, all right? We're going to plug in a 1 for x. So we have negative 1 to the nth power, and then we have 1 to the 2 nth power, which... That's the same. That's basically the same thing as this, right? So that's going to diverge also. Now, on this one, it says use the calculator to compare f of x to the first five terms in the series in part a. What do you notice on the interval between negative uh, one half and two? So, again, what ends up happening, just like I said before, all right, is that, and again, they give you a better picture on those notes that I'm going to send with this, all right? That's basically what this looks like. That's the original function. And the series sort of does this. All right, so what that means is that, so again, this is the Maclaurin um, approximation, I guess. I, I hate to call it approximation, but the series. So as you can tell, that it's kind of accurate between negative 1 and 1, but once you go past that, then, and by the way, it's like up here. It's not that accurate, but it's pretty accurate. But after, if you go outside that interval, then it's no longer accurate. And that's really what they're trying to tell you, right? Which is what I already told you at the beginning of the lesson anyway. So let's go ahead and move on to example five. Let me see, is this when things get interesting? Yes. Now, it took me a little while, all right, to figure out what they were doing in example five until I realized that what they were doing on, I think, 10.2, they told you to remember certain sums. One of them was the sum for cosine, all right? So I'm going to write this up here. Oop. Excuse me. I'm going to write this up here. Okay, so that's one of the uh, one of the sums you're supposed to remember. The other one was sine, the other one was e to the x. All right, so please, please, please make sure you are looking at those when you're doing your homework, okay? Because you're going to look at some of this homework, and I will send the homework, but please do me a favor. Don't look at it the entire time. Try to see what you can do before you look at the key. All right, excuse me. So we're going to try to find the Maclaurin series of f of x, all right? So what they do here is they're going to use this sum instead, okay? Now, what they're going to do with that sum is instead of writing x, they're going to replace that x with an x squared. Okay, so they're going to substitute an x for an x squared. So they're going to rewrite it like this, and they're going to use this sum right here, the one you see here, but they're going to replace that x with an x squared, right? So let's pretend that this is just a normal sum, 
All right, so let's just pretend it's a normal sum here. So let's see, that would be one for the first one. If I plug in a one for the second one, I would get x squared over two, right? So again, I'm doing the one for cosine. Let me get rid of that. Right, I'm, um, yes, okay. Then the next one would be, Let's see, that would be one, so two would be four. So one right there, that would be x squared. Oh no, that would be four, okay. So then I'm gonna write it like this, give me a second. And then a minus something to the sixth, six factorial. So what they're gonna, what they did now is they substituted this x right here with an x squared. So instead of writing x like they normally would here, that's what they would have. Okay. So really what we have therefore is one minus x to the fourth over two factorial. This would be x to the eight, four factorial minus x to the 12, six factorial. And, and they do wanna know the general term. So basically you have to find some formula that tells you what that is, okay? Now this right here would be negative one and so that's not going to change for us, right? This is going to be pretty much identical, right? That's what we have up here. Except for now, notice that I'm just going to substitute. Instead of x, I'm going to write x squared. And this is just going to be 2, two to the n. So basically the same, right? So now it says we're going to use our answer to find the Maclaurin series for f prime of x, all right? So instead of taking the derivative of this, which actually I find that much easier, uh, we're actually going to take the derivative of this instead. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. The derivative of the first part is zero. The derivative of this would be four x cubed over two factorial, or two factorial is just a constant. This is eight x to the seventh. This is minus 12 x to the 11th over six factorial plus dot, 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 plus. Now, remember, I'm taking the derivative with respect to x, so don't worry about the n terms, all right? That's gonna be important because that's gonna mess you up sometimes. These right here are constants. I don't have to do anything with that. Okay, so what I have to do now, um, um, let me rewrite this for just a second, just to make it easier on myself. This right here would be the same thing as x to the 4n all over 2n factorial. All right, so now I can take the derivative that much easier. So this is uh, 4n x. And remember, we're just going to subtract one from the power. So that's it. Here, that's the derivative. All right, so this is when things actually really take a turn for the worse, in my opinion. All right, now it says, given that f of x is the arc tangent of x centered at x is equal to zero, it says find the power series representation for f of x, which is known as Gregory series. Okay, so basically, long story short, we wanna find a, a power series, all right, representation for this. So here's what's gonna happen, okay? What's gonna happen here is that the derivative, the derivative, and I know it's not asking me for the derivative, but hang in there. All right, so you might want to just listen instead of writing. The derivative is this. Okay. Now, why does that matter? Well, because that's a lot easier to do, right? We can actually find a, a series for that. So we know that the derivative is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, and did we do that already somewhere? I feel like we did, maybe we didn't. Uh, 
No. No, we haven't. So I may do it on the side here. It looks like they didn't do it. They just assumed you knew what they were talking about. From example four. Did we do this in example four? Oh, yeah, 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 we did. Okay, so from example four. We know that this right here is the same thing as a series, right? That's where that series converges. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so we know that that's what that's equal to, right? So if I write the actual series here, I would have like one minus x squared. If I start plugging in those numbers into the series, that is x to the fourth. So this right here that I'm writing approximates, or it's a good representation for the arc tangent, okay, within a certain um, interval. But anyway. So here's what we're going to do. Since I know that this right here is the derivative of arc tangent, I'm going to take the integral of this because if I integrate this, right, then I should get back to the arc tangent. So I'm going to integrate both sides. Now again, the integral of this is the arc tangent. And I mean, don't get me wrong, guys. So it's not one that I have memorized either, but we'll definitely have to get better at this. So I'm taking the antiderivative of each one, and then hopefully you're finding a pattern here. Okay. Now, the pattern, hopefully, you can see is that the arc tangent, notice that it is an alternating sequence. It goes from positive to negative to positive to negative to positive, right? So I'm safe and putting this on like this. It's number one step right there. I know that much. Let's see. And the next part is the hard part, right? Because you're going to have to figure out a way to make the first value x. Okay, so you, you got to find a way to make the first value x. Now, on the bottom, notice that I go from 3 to 5 to 7. So I have a lot, and that helps. And maybe I didn't write it here, but I could have written that as 1 there also. So notice that if I plug in a 0 for n, I would end up with the first one. Now, the top part is the part that once you figure this out, then it becomes a whole lot easier, right? You went from the first power to the third power to the fifth and so on and so on. So, this right here, I can write it as x to the power of 2n plus 1. Okay. Um, so, let's see. I didn't really do that. Is as for the power series representation. Okay. So, now we have to figure out. It doesn't really ask me for the interval of convergence. At least, I don't see that they do. But let me see what they're talking about here. Okay, well, if we're going to do it like that, let me see. Ooh, that would be a hard one to figure that out. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about the, the interval of convergence since they're not asking me for it. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the bottom. So now it says Gregory series converges for negative one to one. All right, so I guess they did find it, or right? they're telling us that that's where it converges. Now it says let x is equal to one. Let x be equal to one and determine the resulting series called the. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Embarrassing. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write the series that I just found. I'm going to plug in a one for x. So now this is going to be a one. All 
And then notice, guys, that uh, this doesn't really matter. That's just going to be a 1, really. All right, so what I have is this. If I plug in a 0, I would get a 1. If I plug in a 1, I would get a 3 on the bottom. And a negative, so yeah. And then so on and so forth. And apparently at some point, if you keep going, you basically, this converges to pi over 4. Now how that does that, uh, again, not really sure. All right, so we're going to move on. This is just basically a bare basics lesson here. Now, this is actually probably the hardest one that I did in the notes. You can tell that it's the hardest one because my voice got up, up there really, really high. Okay, so here is the weird part. Okay, now we're going to have to, and really I haven't had a whole lot of chances to use many other manipulation techniques, except for now I'm basically comparing this this right here to something that I can actually take, uh, that I can actually compare it to. So here's what I'm trying to say, all right? Just go there with me. We know that if I take the derivative of this, and I think, I think this is a hard part to find out what that is, right? I guess we can just find a simplified version of that. No, simplify perhaps is not the right term to use there. But if I take the derivative of that, remember that would be 1 minus 2x to the negative 1. So that would be um, hmm. that would be negative 1 minus 2x to the negative 2. So this would be times the derivative of the inside. Oh my gosh, that's that's what it is. Times a negative two. So that will give me a two over one minus two x to the second power. All right, so that's the derivative. What does that matter? Because that's really close to this, right? Not exactly the same, but it's pretty close. So after that, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say that this right here what do I care? Well, because this right here is basically a geometric power series. We're very close to it. Where A is 1 and R is 2x. Okay. Now, for the sake of what I'm about to do next, I'm going to rewrite it. Normally I wouldn't, but this is 2 to the n, x to the n. All right. Now, what I'm going to do here is notice that what I'm doing here is I'm going to hmm, take the derivative. Hmm. Well, I'm trying to think here. Oh, that's right. If I take the derivative of this, which is what I just wrote. That basically means I'm going to take the derivative of this also. Okay, so I know the derivative on this side is going to be 2, 1 minus 2x squared, but what I did over here on the right, okay. Now on the right side, Okay, on the right side, I hopefully I remember this. I hopefully I remember how to do this part right here. But what happens is, let's see, mm, the derivative of. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Now we're talking the derivative with respect to x. So really, the only thing I need to take the derivative of is this. 
Now, here's the part that kind of tripped me up for a minute because what I noticed is they, they wrote this as n is equal to 1 to infinity instead of n is equal to 0. So what happened there is that what I had to do to figure out what they did is I just had to use the series, right, without the derivative here. So I, if I plug in a 0 here and here, that would basically give me um, a 2, a 2. That doesn't make any sense. What does it give me? Oh, if n is equal to 1. Why did I do that? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, the, the first term doesn't matter, but the second term, when I put the second term, I would get a 2x. Now, this is supposed to be the derivative, okay? So, at n is equal to 1, I'm supposed to get a 2, okay? So, that's the reason they put a 1 there instead of a 0. So, now... After that, the, the craziness continues. All right, so forget about this. I was just showing you how that worked. Okay. Oh, gosh. So then I'm going to go back and I'm going to change that to n is equal to 0 and I'm going to increase the n by 1. And this n will be plus 1 minus 1, so that's just going to be n. Okay. So again, notice that I have pretty close to what I need here, right? At least the bottom part is exactly the same, but now I need an x squared. I need to get rid of. I need to get rid of the two. So I'm gonna multiply both sides times an x squared divided by two. And why am I doing that? Because that gets rid of that two. That puts the x squared on here. Okay, so. Okay, so after that, I'm going to just simplify a little bit. Notice that x squared times x to the n, you basically have to add the powers, right? So this side right here will become well, let's just do it. This is 2n times 2. This is n plus 1. And this is going to be x n plus 2. Then that 2 right here is that 2. Those 2's are going to cancel. And again, then we'll set up what we're doing here. We just did a bunch of little tiny changes until we got a summation or a series, excuse me, that would approximate f of x, okay? Uh, okay, well, that's pretty much it, guys. I know that, that part was really rough, right, even for me. So make sure to look at the homework. Don't look at the key, all right, when I send it to you. Just try to do everything on your own to figure out how we can do this, okay? Right, until next time, guys.